Okay, so what's the textbook say? Okay, what's the textbook say about blocking? I, I touched on some of these. Feet, feet shoulder width apart, um, knees over the feet, butt even or above the knees, back at a 45, hands behind the glove, okay, hips and feet square to the pitcher. Okay, that's, that's kind of what the textbook um, and what I was coached as, as a young player, this is how you do it. This is how you block. Or excuse me, this is how you set up in, in a stance. Okay, and this is kind of what's really happening in my opinion. Okay, and, and this is our guy, Joey Morgan, who's a, a great player for us, going to be a, a high draft pick. And, 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 and we'll look at some big league guys next, but, but here's what we've kind of narrowed it down to four. And there's probably more than this, and, and you could argue that there's different variations within this system, and, and I wouldn't dispute that, but we've narrowed it to four. We have kind of a modified primary, right? So there may be a run threat, but because of the score, because of the speed of the runner, the likelihood of, of, of somebody trying to steal a base is really low. Um, Another scenario there would, I, I'm getting a fastball, and I know the guy, because I, I, I know a lot about our pitching staff, know that when I, when I call a fastball, this guy can command it, and he doesn't bury fastballs. He doesn't throw them in the dirt, right? And I know that, so I don't have to get into the big traditional secondary where I have to necessarily be prepared to block, okay? I know or have a high probability that the ball is not gonna be in the dirt. I'm more in a primary, okay? You see, I have video here, I'll show you, of Buster Posey in secondary situations in a, in a complete primary. There's no intent to block if the ball's in the dirt. Okay, and I think you could say that's lazy. I think it's smart, okay? I think it's smart. I think it's playing the percentages. Okay, we have a fastball secondary where we might be a little more staggered with the feet. Okay, we're ready to block or throw. There's a, a runner on first, first and second, first and third. There's a run scenario that I may need to throw from, um, but I know, again, because the guy on the mound I trust, he doesn't vary fastballs very often. I can cheat the feet slightly to throw. Um, we can call it cheating. I like to use more the term of hey, I'm trying to, to push the margin or, or the, the, the percentages in, in my favor. Okay, we have a non-fastball a non secondary where maybe I'm a little bit more square. Um, I'm getting something that's not a fastball, so the, the likelihood of it being in the dirt or higher. I'm a little bit more prepared to block but could still throw. And then the last one is a goalie, right? And that's a um, block mode only, right? And, and again, we haven't talked about receiving. I think that's kind of the, the obvious. We have to do that in all these scenarios. Right? We've got to be able to catch the ball. Okay? But um, aside from that, moving on and trying to prioritize block and throw, um, the goalie scenario or the goalie secondary, runner on third base, base is loaded, really anytime you're defending a run or there's no threat to run. So 0-2 breaking ball, nobody on base. Yeah, I don't need to make a throw. I'm all block. I'm all block mode, right? and I get in a position that allows me to accomplish that task um, at, a, at a high probability. And I think it's also player dependent. If, you, if guys, if you don't like getting into that position and you feel like you're more efficient blocking from a non-fastball secondary, then that's what you do. So I, we don't prescribe this to guys and say, hey, you always have to do it this way. What we're giving them is a scope of different stances that they can practice and utilize. Um, but, but feedback from the player, I think, is, is really, really critical in figuring out which guys um, like to do which stance more often. And, and, and maybe guys will have three stances. Maybe there's more that, that aren't even listed, but my point is I think you need to create some variety in how your guys set up. Just another visual. You see the, the steel threat is high. Okay, the steel threat working down is low. Off speed to the left, fastball to the right. So same idea, just laying out some different scenarios. You know, one thing, again, we, I was talking with some of the other presenters earlier. Um, you can't map out every scenario. Okay, you can't map out every single thing that might happen throughout the course of the game. What we're trying to do is create athletes, create guys that can utilize their instincts, but put themselves in a position to, to have success. Here's Buster Posey, just an example. 2016 Gold Glove winner. Okay, four different examples similar to what we just looked at. Okay, you see him there in a modified primary. He's in a fastball secondary ready to throw. He's in a non-fastball secondary ready to block or throw. And he's in a goalie setup with no intent to throw, all block. Same thing here, all secondary type scenarios, okay, what the textbook would say, you get into a, a traditional secondary stance, okay, notice you see some versatility or some variety. I think in all occasions too, it's Madison Baumgartner versus the one down in the right, the bottom right is, is the only outlier, but same pitcher, same catcher, different situations in the game, okay, different secondaries. This I thought was really cool, and really I hadn't heard or, or seen this until diving into this, but the ability to prioritize or even transition from one stance to, the, to another within the context of, of a pitch, not just the game, or not just pitch to pitch, but notice he starts out in more your traditional 
non-fastball secondary, ready to block or throw. Tim Lincecum, Washington Husky, okay, not very quick to the plate by any means, okay, no intent to control the running game, okay, so maybe it helps that he's slow to the plate and Buster has more time to transition. Okay, but in flight, as leg lift um, occurs, base runner does not take off, and notice what, what Buster does with his feet. Okay, he realizes in his peripheral the runner is not trying to advance, he's not stealing a base, I'm not going to have to make a throw, and notice how he kind of shimmies and, and widens his stance to get into more of a block mode. I thought that was, was pretty high level. Um, that maybe you can at least talk about. I don't, I don't know how you'd implement it, but I think, again, just more evidence that guys are adjusting their stance to try to execute tasks.